practical farm here is the, the making of compost, about improving the soil and constantly bringing more organic matter and more life into the soil. The compost production process is actually really easy and it's accessible to anyone. It doesn't take expensive parts. It doesn't take that much space. All you need are three simple ingredients and those ingredients can come from any number of sources. We're gonna use brown matter, which on this farm, we use corn husks for because they, they produced a bunch of corn at this farm and this was kind of tossed aside to be used later. So using corn husks is our brown matter. It's gonna be the high carbon component of our compost pile. Then we need green matter. You're looking for a green uh, leafy matter. The, the green color in the leaf indicates that there's still quite a bit of nitrogen left in it. Uh, if I was to leave this out in the sun, after a couple days, it would turn brown, and that's indicating that the nitrogen has been lost into the atmosphere. Um, so we wanna cut it fresh, use it fresh in our compost pile. Um, we just had a bunch of weeds around our farm, and this morning we went out and, and collected them up and put them in a big pile. And as we add it to the compost pile, we're gonna chop it into little bits. Uh, we also have a bunch of food scraps from the kitchen that we're gonna layer into the pile as well. And that also is considered part of our green uh, component. For the uh, nitrogen component of the compost pile, uh, generally um, we use manure in the pile. You can get away with using the, the greens from legume plants because they're also high, high in nitrogen. Um, but we're gonna use, in our local area, there's lots of cows around, so we just went to some local farmers and got their manure from them. And so we're just using some manure out of their, out of their, uh, their cow yards. So we'll layer this in along with the green and the brown and uh, add, add moisture and oxygen and uh, that'll make our compost pile. Um, all the different countries represented, um, the place can reach some kind of uh, resilience. Uh, another important component to our compost pile is an inoculum of uh, microorganisms from the previous compost pile. So we're gonna take some high quality compost that we produced previously and sprinkle it into our pile as we're making the layers. That way all the bacterial life, all the fung fungal life and the microorganisms that are thriving in this pile will be added to that pile and will start to just flourish as we create the right, the right conditions. This is gonna make the, our new compost pile beautiful and wonderful for our site. All right, when we go to build our compost piles, we need to get the correct proportions of our different components. What we're looking for is a 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio in our pile. Generally, we do it based on recipes and then adjust your pile as you go. So one of the most common recipes is a 40% brown matter, 40% green matter, and 20% high nitrogen. So then you layer those in your pile, watering it pretty heavily the entire time, and then let it sit. Now, depending on what materials you're using, you're gonna have to adjust that. So what you're gonna need to do is build your pile with the materials you have readily available to you in your area, and then see how it goes. If the pile gets too hot, which we often experience here in the tropics because the microbes are so active and so ready to, to do their job, that, that means we have too much nitrogen in the pile. So when you, when you go to turn the pile, um, it, we should mix in a little bit more carbon matter. That can be sawdust, that can be strips of paper, and that can be our corn husks that we're using here. If your pile is not really doing anything, it's not really getting hot, it doesn't seem to be breaking down, um, that means you don't have enough nitrogen. So basically get a little bit more manure or a little bit more of your legume greens and mix those in as you're turning the pile. If, you're, if your pile just smells completely like sewage, if it just smells like, then that's a sign that it's going anaerobic, which means you don't have enough oxygen in the pile. It's really important that we don't allow the compost pile to go anaerobic. So the best method for that is to acquire a compost thermometer and watch the temperature of the pile. We wanna watch, watch the temperature going up to about 65 degrees Celsius. At 65 degrees Celsius, then we wanna turn the pile, get more air into it, and allow it to go through its process again. If the pile gets to 70 degrees Celsius, it's gonna start killing 
beneficial, beneficial microbial life. There's two main reasons why that would happen. One is that the pile is too wet, which means you just need to add more dry material or spread the pile out a little bit and let it dry out. The other reason why it might be going anaerobic is that you have too much nitrogen. And so the nitrogen is reacting a lot and eating up all the oxygen really quickly before it can re-aerate itself. So really important to keep our piles as an aerated pile. So with those tricks and over a couple of times of trying it, you should become really comfortable at making a really high quality compost. Oh yeah, there's one other thing. If you're not so concerned about creating the best quality compost, but instead want to focus on making hot water for showers, you can run a black plastic tubing through the pile and get the pile to get up to those really high temperatures and you can have hot water for, for weeks.